Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm doing my updated 2022 Senate map for today, October 8th, 2021. So I've been trying to do a updated Senate map either every time it changes or every month to every other month or so. And I just thought a few things have changed, not a lot, but a few things have changed. So I'm going to do my updated 2022 map. So first things first, I'm going to start with the state of New Hampshire. The state of New Hampshire, I'm going to put in the battleground column. That's the state I want to discuss more in length. Uh, Vermont, I think, will be safe for the Democrats. New York and Connecticut, I also think, will be safe for the Democrats as well. The state of Maryland will go safe Democrat. The state of Pennsylvania, just like New Hampshire, will be a pure battleground I want to come back to. The state of Ohio, I actually have Ohio going in the safe Republican column for now. That really depends on who the Republican nominee is going to be. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put Ohio in the likely column. Because whether it's Josh Mandel or J.D. Vance, that race could potentially get closer. Indiana and Kentucky, I will put in the safe Republican column for now. Democrats will win the state of Illinois safe. Wisconsin, that will be a pure battleground as well. The current senator, Chuck Grassley of Iowa, is running again, so Iowa goes in the safe Republican column. The state of Missouri, it will be interesting if, um, if, I believe it's Eric Schmidt versus, I'm blanking on his name, but the former governor, Eric Greitens, if he gets it, make it closer. For now, I'm putting in the safe calm. If Greitens the nominee, we may have to revisit that one. Arkansas and Louisiana, I think, will be safe, as will Alabama and South Carolina. The state of North Carolina and Georgia, both pure toss-ups. Florida, I'm going to start in the likely calm. I think Marco Rubio will defeat Val Demings by a pretty big margin, but is it more than 10 points? That's a question that I may have to wait a little longer down the line to figure out. North and South Dakota will both go safe red. Kansas, unless Chris Kobach is the nominee, which he's not running, but, you know, literally Kansas will go red unless he's involved. Oklahoma, the primary may be interesting in Oklahoma with Inhofe, actually, but other than that, should be safe. Uh, the state of Colorado... Colorado, I'm going to put in the likely Democratic column for now. I think that if it's a Republican uh, wave midterm, I think that may, be a, that may be enough sway to pull it under 10%, but even still, likely Democrats, probably like 9%. So pretty much safe for the Democrats there. Utah, even though Evan McMullen's running uh, for Senate, I don't know what that's going to do. Trump's not on the ballot. Utah should go safe red. Idaho should also go safe Republican. Uh, Arizona's going to be a pure toss-up that we're going to talk about. Nevada, pure toss-up, same thing. Washington State will be safe Democrat. Oregon will be safe Democrat. California will be safe Democrat as well. Hawaii will be safe Democrat. And Alaska? Alaska's interesting because I don't know what's going to shake up with the primary with Lisa Murkowski and uh, Kelly Shabaka, I believe her name is. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But for now, I'm actually going to put in the likely Republican column because I honestly, there's just a lot of variables in there that I'm not sure how it's going to start out yet. So, Republicans have 47, Democrats have 46. First things first, the state of Nevada. Nevada is a state where I think it's going to be one of the closest Senate races of 2022. Adam Laxalt, who has pretty high name recognition in the state, is running against Senator Catherine Cortez Mastro, who the one advantage she has is she hasn't really said or done anything too decisive to make her unpopular. So really, Nevada will just be who has the better turnout for 2022, Republicans or Democrats. With that said, I do think Nevada or 2022 will be a Republican wave year, but I think right now Cortez Masto will narrowly hold on by 1% or less because I think her not being too polarizing will be just enough to help her hold on. Next, we have the state of Arizona. We'll have Mark Kelly going up against, in my opinion, Mark Bernanovich, I believe is how you say his name. It's either him or maybe Blake Masters, who I could see President Trump endorsing if he wants to spite Bernanovich, but I think it's Kelly versus Bernanovich right now. I think Arizona starts off with a narrow Mark Kelly lead, probably 1% to 2%. Honestly, I'm comfortable putting it in the tilt column, to be honest. It's going to be really, really close, just like, just like Nevada. But Arizona are two seats that I'm giving to the Democrats that I could definitely see flip by 2022. I could also see the Democrats expand on their lead and margin by more than 1% in 2022. So, something to keep an eye on. The state of Wisconsin, this is all about uh, Ron Johnson. We're still waiting for him to make his decision. Is he running again? Is he not? I mean, 
if he's not running again, this this race is a pure battleground. And I mean, it pretty much is a pure battleground anyway. But Ron Johnson versus the likely Attorney General. I think Ron Johnson starts off as a narrow one-point favorite. But this is something to keep an eye on. If Ron Johnson doesn't run, this is a battleground, maybe till Democrat. But that's something we're going to have to look out and watch for. The state of North Carolina. I think North Carolina starts off by about a... 1% to 2% margin, so lean to likely. I'll put it in tilt, lean to tilt. Uh, the primary is going to be interesting, whether it's Pat McCrory or Ted Budd. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see on that, but this should be a very, very close race, as North Carolina has been for the last few years. The state of New Hampshire, it's all about Chris Sununu, if, he's, if he decides to run or not. Chris Sununu is very popular in the state. It is my opinion that I think Chris Sununu will run. And he's starting to set up some of the packs and fun, or not packs, but he's starting to set up some fundraisers and trying to get more, um, kind of, I won't say involved with national leaders, like taking trips to like Kentucky and California, New York. Like, they're doing these very under the radar type moves that I think indicates he's going to run. And I think if he does decide to run, I think Chris Nunu will win this race by about 2 to 3% in the lean column over Senator Maggie Hassan. If Chris Renunu decides not to run, then I think it would be Maggie Hassan versus the other Republican, Don Bolduck. And in that scenario, I think Maggie Hassan would probably win probably by about 4 or 5%, probably in the likely column, I'd say. But for now, I think Renunu will run, which puts New Hampshire in the lean Republican column. That leaves two races left, Georgia and Pennsylvania. I mean, these two are the closest to Like Nevada, I think, may be the closest but Pennsylvania and Georgia, I'm 100% sure these will be the closest. Uh, and you could really put these as tilt Republican or tilt Democrat. They can both go either way. Georgia, I think Raphael Warnock versus Herschel Walker. You know, it's going to be tough because the governor's race may have tailcoats for what happens throughout the rest of the state. And it is possible that either thing could happen. I think, I have a weird feeling Herschel Walker is going to pull out a win in Georgia and defeat Raphael Warnock. I think he'll be able to get enough turnout to narrowly win by under 1%. In the state of Pennsylvania, I mean, this is this is really tough to tell. Sean Parnell is likely to be the Republican nominee. Uh, he's backed by Trump. He seems to be polling well. So that's, I would say, good news for the Republican Party. On the Democratic side, you have John Fetterman or Connor Lamb. The winner of that primary is going to be really, really interesting. And it's kind, of, it's kind of a tough situation because if Lamb wins, a lot of... Uh, progressive Democrats aren't going to turn out. And then if Fetterman wins, a lot of conservative and moderate Democrats are going to be very concerned about voting for him. So it's kind of a tough situation for Democrats and PA, which is why I'm starting Pennsylvania in the tilt Republican column. But, I mean, I mean this. Every single race that's in tilt right now, including New Hampshire, if Sununu doesn't run, could flip to the other party. That's how close 2022 is going to be. I mean, this is a scenario where you could see 52, 48 Republicans or maybe 54-46 for Republicans, or even 55-45 for Democrats. This is going to be a very close election that will go right down to the wire. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed. And uh, yeah, to my returning subscribers, thank you so much for watching. Again, I really appreciate it. That'll do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.